Welcome back, everyone. It's the Aces NFL Show. It's week eight already. Can you believe it? Uh, it's been that many weeks. And uh, our man, Sipos, has actually, he's had a spell. He said, I need a holiday because he hasn't backed the winner in a while. And uh, <laughs> I'm only staring. Sip's been on fire. But today we have Joe Watson taking uh, Sip's seat to break down all our NFL um, news and uh, tips and predictions and everything else for fantasy. But uh, Wispy, welcome back to the pod, mate. Great to have you here, and thank you for jumping in the uh, hot seat. Yeah, thank you. And isn't it great to be back in the NFL swing of things? And as you said, our week eight already coming up, and seems like the the cream is rising to the crop. And there's not a lot of great teams out there, Tommy. It's uh, it's a hard sort of slog and a lot of injuries. You're a Raiders man. Yeah. Well, just give me like a quick. <laughs> watch them. Well, do you even watch their games at the moment? <laughs> no, I don't watch their games. I mean, uh, once. Gardner Minshew, you can't be you can't be <laughs> your starting quarterback. Uh, you know, I think that they made a mistake listening to the players. Devonta Adams, Max Crosby, the ones that were um, you know pushing for Antonio Pierce to be the coach. That's not going to work. Whenever the players are choosing the coaches, it's never a good sign, and no. I don't think he's going to last long. It's weird that if Adams picked him to be the coach and then he's left yeah. <laughs> already late. And he was, and he, honestly, I thought he was going to leave at the start of the year, but he just couldn't get a deal done. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. You've got a bit of a, you know, thing with, there's certain like teams that genuinely have great leadership at the top and you can clearly see that, can't you? Like the Chargers head coach they've got this year, you can just tell he knows how to run a football program and win. Now it's ugly at the moment, but yeah. he's clearly got a strategy to build that team from the ground up where some other teams, they just... They don't even look – like you think of the Panthers, what they've done, and yeah. you think of even the Raiders, what they're doing. And, and and if they lose Crosby as well, which you're hearing now, like the Lions should make a play, mm. what, what, it's going to take them years to come back. Well, that's uh, – they talk about what Bill Walsh used to say uh, in the 80s who was a legendary San Franciscan 49ers coach, and he's like, we're only ever competing against eight teams. And that's really what it is. <laughs> like there's only eight teams that really know what they're doing when you think about it. <laughs> Uh, and the, the same can be said in the AFL. You're only competing against a very small amount because inevitably the owners uh, get involved in bad organisations and then they employ people that they like because they want to keep the control rather than understanding that they're the ones that own the team, but the uh, the team gets more valuable when the team when it's going well. Yes. So stay out of it, <laughs> stick to what you know, and um, you know. And I think the other thing is just the good coaches they make such a big difference, and um, you can just see like Pittsburgh. You know, they're not a great side, but they're five and two. You know, yeah. Tomlin no, he mate. knows how to do it. He the Harbors are both good coaches. Andy Reid's a great coach. Um, I think that Dan Campbell's showing that he's a great coach. Um, and then uh, Kevin O'Connell in um, Minnesota, he obviously knows how to coach quarterbacks. You know, like to get the production that he's got out of Darnold. Um, you know, just shows that there's such a big influence on guys that um, can coach a team and and identi- and then you get an identify a culture straight away. So as you were saying, like Harbour, they're not a great side at the moment, but you can see how they want to play. Like they're tough, they're going to play hard on defense and they're going to run the ball yeah. um, and gives them a chance to win games. Yeah, it's spot on, spot on. I was even thinking that Matt Lafleur, he's been pretty strong. And it, I thought on reflection, I think Robert Sala is stiff. Like oh, I reckon they shouldn't have done what they did. I reckon they should have got Adams in and let him continue the year out. I think they've made a mistake, the Jets. I don't. I, I didn't like Salah as a coach. I, I thought that he didn't have um, an identifiable sort of brand. He and, was defensive early, wasn't he? Well, he's a defensive coordinator at the 49ers, yeah. um, and they were a good defense last year, but I just felt like there was too many, um, you know, missing sort of parts, and, and I didn't think that there was a lot of consistency in the way that the Jets play. They're defensively, this year, they haven't been as good. They've got injuries like everyone else, but – um, I think that he had enough time and I couldn't see a path forward for the Jets. I I think he deserved three more weeks, but in the end, I mean, they're two and five at the moment. I'll tell you what, I've backed them heavily four yeah. weeks in a row. I mean, when are they going to turn it? Like they ha- they got the Patriots this week. They, they, they Not only do I want them to win, they need to smoke the Patriots. I mean, what, well, they got the best defense on paper. Mm. They can't stop the run to save themselves. But this offense they have at the moment, I think you know Reddick's now Hassan Reddick's finally rocked up. So like, God, I hope he's fit and available and can do what he's meant to do. But that, it's 
it's pretty disappointing what they've done. Like from a list point of view, they've got yeah. everything there, really, don't they? Like it's. Yeah, I think they're still a bit soft on the offensive line, and that's probably. Yeah. Um, and you you would have expected Brees Hall to be able to run the ball better than what they have. Um, he showed a, he was pretty good last week, and but that was sort of the first time where they actually fed him. Um, and. I just think that they're probably still a little bit softer, and you just don't trust them, do you? Like no, you, you, don't. you don't trust them. Flags to be able, everywhere. Yeah, that's and that's the thing. The, the detail orientated. Yeah. They're just not that Buffalo Jets game oh, was man. horrible, wasn't it? A few oh, weeks ago, it was horrible for many reasons. I had Brees Hall through a massive collect. We had a laugh on this podcast. Then last week, Brees Hall first touchdown against the Steelers. Like they got good run day, you know. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? Like my last leg of a multi all week was. Brees Hall, we're having a laugh about it on here. And then I go, you watch, he'll come out and dominate. And he's gone for, I think he went for a hundred and something and uh, and a tutty for the first. It was sickening. But um, What look, did you think of um, Jared Mayo's comments after the game last week about them being soft? I thought he's, I don't think he said they are soft. Didn't he say we were soft? There was a little bit in the wording. And then yeah. Bill Belichick's come out and defended his players. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a little bit of a cheeky, a little bit cheeky from Bill because he's yeah. like, you know, it's just, it's a great opportunity for him to stick up for his players that uh, yeah. you know make him sound a bit better than what he is. But I, I watched that game and they were soft. Like I watched yeah. one of the linebackers run to the boundary and it looked slippery on the feet in London. Yeah. But the like the tackle technique, you just got to come from a bloke that uh, did a lot of tackle <laughs> practice after training because I couldn't was tackle. Known, was known it's like, you know, just, just short feet, you know, like just get in there and it's about just getting up to like to get up to the hips as quick as you can. This bloke was just dawdling. Yeah. And I think it was um their third string. Ever, uh, correct me who it is in a second. He got the first touchdown. I can't remember who it was, but – he, like, he just caught one at the backfield, cut inside, and the bloke that is nowhere near him and touched it. I thought, that is pretty soft. Like, yeah. from a Patriots defense, they're normally very good against the run. So I don't like coaches going out publicly and saying that, though. Keep that in-house. Yeah. That would be my comment. So do I like it? Not really. No. No, I think it, it reflects poorly on the coach when you say that because yeah. you can have those conversations internally. Yes. Um, but – I agree with what Belichick said. I mean, like last year we were, you know, one of the top defenses against the run. If you're a top defense against the run and it's the same personnel, you're not soft, are you? No. Because that, that's – you can't be uh, soft and be a good def- uh, run defense. Side. Agree. Yeah, didn't like it, Wispy. I think you can keep it internal. And uh, the, the, look, Drake May, he looks all right. I think he actually looks all right. He, it's yeah. good to see quarterbacks that can just play the position. You yeah. know, like you said, you, you watch the Raiders and it's just – you don't know what you're going to get. And I'll talk about a couple of other teams, like the Titans and Miami. Two was back this week. Let's hope he's he can he can stay there on the, on the field. But when he's not there, it's just bad. Righto, week seven talking points. Let's crank into them. Brees Hall, first touchdown, touchdown. That. Deshaun Watson, Achilles. It's massive. It, it was – it was uh, – look, I don't even think he should have been out there. He should yeah. have been – I think, like, Winston comes out and just throws a touchdown straight away. And it's like it's not that hard, I think, with a with an okay quarterback. Um, but that's big and that's that's huge issues for them. They've got – Well, it's, think, the, it's the guaranteed money that's the huge issues. And, and really what it was was they, sh- they should have kept Flacco. Flacco could uh, throw the ball and the, and the Cleveland could score last year. Uh, in the end, they got rid of Flacco because of the Deshaun Watson contract and what they're guaranteed towards him. Had they kept Flacco, they would have been in a better position. But um, rather than picking the best player to win, they picked the player that they had given the most money to. So uh, I think that they will throw the ball. I don't mind them this week, um, Cleveland. I think you can take the points. Um, you know, the Ravens give up a lot of points in the last quarter and they're not great against the run. You're not going to be able to run the ball uh, sorry, they're not going against the pass, the Terrible Ravers. The pass. So you're going to be able, you're not going to be able to run the ball on them if you're Cleveland. But Jameis is going to throw it up there. You oh, know, like yeah. he will he will throw interceptions, oh. but he'll also throw touchdowns. So um, you know, I've got Jerry Judy. I'm not sure whether or not I put him on the field for fantasy this week, but I, I'm thinking about it because I think David Njoku is a good fantasy play. Um, I reckon Jameis will find him a lot. Nick Chubb's coming back, so. Um, I don't mind Cleveland with the points this week against the Ravens. Yeah, I know it's a great call. He's one of my best bets of the week. We'll go about later. But Jameis for passing yards. I yeah. mean, the, the algorithm's completely cooked. I don't think they – he hasn't played, you know, all year. But him, he's going to be throwing the ball a lot. They're not yep. going to run the ball. And Nick Chubb found the end zone last week. It was great to see him back. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's – it's yeah, he ain't going to be running many yards against this uh, Ravens D. Uh, Danny Dimes' drought continues. I mean, how do you pay a man? I mean, we could – 
we're going on a lot about these players and the issues, but like there's so many blokes that are overpaid. Like yeah. how can you pay Danny Dimes, New York Giants uh, quarterback, whatever he's on? I think he's on like 160. He's 40 a year on 40 average. 40 mil, and he hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in however long now. I know he's injured, but it's like 600 days at MetLife at home. Like how can you not throw a touchdown? Like yeah, you, know, you could get a backup off the street, Josh mm. Dobbs, who's like a – Back up. He was throwing two or three a week. You know, it, it's pathetic. Yeah. And, well, it's uh, just the evaluation of it, isn't it? Incorrectly evaluating what you have. Uh, oh. And it's the same thing in any sport is it, you know, if you don't get it right, you, you uh, it can really cost yourself. You've got to be really diligent with um, what you have and then paying it accordingly. You can't overpay for just average. No. Nah. Um, righto. Can, uh, can the Jets get going or do you think they're done? I, I don't think so. I, I think that – uh, Buffalo looks like the best team in the East. Um, I think, I think that they will. Uh, you know, like the, I like the Amari Cooper um, addition. Josh Allen's obviously the best quarterback um, in the in the division, and I, I think that they will just keep rolling. They've got a good identity. They can run the ball. I think that they play cold weather football well. You know, they um, got a couple of good tight ends. Uh, I just see the Bills taking the East. It kills me because I've taken my future bet and I took I took <laughs> I took Seattle at nine dollars right yep. and I'm and everything's humming I'm yep. seven from eight if the Jets can win that division it's like I think fifty turns into a hundred thousand you know you right. put a silly bet on and it's always one team every year and everyone I've picked is winning except for the Jets and when they lost to the Bills the other week I was like oh I'm done because yeah. it's just a, it's too far now they're three behind so the only way they will do that is if you know Josh Allen missed time which we don't want. Um, Oh, I'll skip through, but Saquon against his old mob. How good is this? It's just, I, I lost last week on my best, but I took you over on receiving yards. I thought that were all right against the run. And no one's good against Saquon when he gets traded from the Giants. He he showed them what mistake they made. Why would they not pay him an extra bit of, you know, Yeah, it was cash. only two or three million yeah, bucks, well, the difference. Yeah, I don't understand. He's the face of their organization. Yeah. He's the – every kid that goes for the Giants just wears his jersey. Yeah. I don't understand that. Like, it, 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 it's poor evaluating of what you have, isn't it? Like, you, you overpay Daniel Jones, but then you don't pay Saquon Barkley. Um, and that that whole uh, ha- did you watch the the hard knocks I've of the clips. off season? I've you know, like it was very interesting. Yeah. You know, listening to that conversation between Joe Shine, who's the general manager, and Barkley about the trade or exploring your options, and just uh, you know, like if you if you can't evaluate your own talent, then what hope have you got? Oh. It can't be that hard, Wispy, can it? Like, I honestly sit here and go, you just sign him. Yeah. And if you don't sign him, like I'm thinking, you know, Dallas Cowboys, you, I thought they would sign Derrick Henry. Yeah. Like the fact he went to the the, the Ravens, I was pissing myself because I love the Ravens and I love Derrick. And, and just seeing what he's doing now, it's like yeah. I think everyone thought he would do that behind a good O-line. Anyway, yeah. it's got this, me. Well, it's what we went back to is like you're only really competing against eight teams. Yeah. There's only, <laughs> yeah. there's only really eight good coaches and, and then you've got eight good GMs who – who can do it, and, and they invariably are it's you know crazy. at the top every year. I've got a few other things, but injuries are really stacking up. Our man Hayden Crozier put an Instagram story up. He's got four or five on the uh, on the on the IR that we allow because we let IR spots just grow. If you've got injuries, it's tough as it is. But Ayuk, ACL, Debo, pneumonia. Um, the 49ers are really banged up. Josh Reynolds' news just came out this morning that he's been shot, so prayers up to him. I don't yeah. know what happened there. Shot but... twice, um, once in the arm, once in the back of the head. Wow. And he's okay. Apparently he's stable. Well, yeah, but, in a but stable but condition. That's but terrible. That's that's a, shocking. I mean, you know what my take is on guns and that. We won't go in there. It's not uh, not talking politics. But uh, the last point I've got here is the trade Hopkins to the Chiefs. Yep. That's. Do you think he's too old or you think that is going to be a great little uh, move? No, I think it'll be a good move. I think the Chiefs probably halfway through last year they realised that they they they're not like an explosive offense anymore. That was their defense that won them that Super Bowl, uh, and that's probably tracked the same this year. It's like uh, Kelsey's not the same player he is. They've lost um, you know their outside speed. They, Worthy's been a good addition to them, but they're not this high powered offense that they once were. And um, Pacheco being out. Their identity is they run the ball, play great defense. Yeah. And so I think that Hopkins just allows them to, um, you know, win one-on-ones. He, he, he can't separate anymore. He doesn't have that explosiveness. But he can be a situational type receiver for them and keeps them on the field, keeps them moving. I think it was uh, – I don't know that Pat Mahomes threw a touchdown in the month of October. Yeah, that's bizarre. I think he's – I mean, his stats are – 
worse than Daniel Jones's, I think. Yeah. I've said this. So it's it's just they 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 play really complimentary football. They you know yeah. they run the ball. Well, his defense is carrying, and him. the defense is carrying oh, them. Mahomes has been. Pretty average, to yeah. be honest. Like, yeah. I, I think I sent a, vid- a photo to my mate the other day because he just carries on about the Chiefs. And uh, I go, mate, he's going to get smoked by the you know the, yeah. the Ravens later on. But he just continually wins. And Mahomes is so good at situation football, like you said. Like They yeah. need 10 yards, third and 10, the game's on the line. He'll just scramble and get it. <laughs> it who, kills you. Who would you back right now to win the Super Bowl? Oh, Ravens and then the jo- and then, the, then the Lions. Yeah, I think the Lions I want that. Win. I want that matchup. That's I'll happily, I'm a, you know, know, I'm a Ravens man. If Ravens lose to the Lions, yeah. I'd be happy. They look like the most complete team. They need to make a trade, though, because H- yeah. Aiden Hutchinson went down. They yeah. have to grab a Crosby or they have to grab. I think Crosby too too expensive. They'd be able to get, find someone who could rush the pass. They need to find someone. Yeah. They need to find someone because they've got a window where they can win. And yep. it's, as you know, it closes pretty quick. Yep. Um, all right, let's get into this week's games. We are recording this podcast on a Friday. I appreciate everyone's patience. I had to go to Perth for a little Rick's uh Workshop. Anyway, we're back Friday morning, so we're going to talk about the Vikings Rams game, but very quickly because it's already completed as we edit this podcast. But Wispy, the game's completed, so people yep. see how well our tips were for this game. Um, what did you think? What do you think is going to happen? Because it hasn't happened yet, but by the time this is edited, it would have uh, in this game. Vikings at the Rams. The Vikings five and one. Rams four uh, two and four. I think Puka Nakua is back, and so is Cooper Cup. Yeah, I think Cooper Cup will get fed today. Uh, pretty good stat in the slot receiver, as we talked about, uh, for the wide receivers. I think Minnesota very good against the run. So I do, I'm up against um, Boydo this week, and he's got Kyron Williams. So I'm hoping that that trend continues. The streak is done. Yeah, and I hope the streak is done. So out on the limb, I'll say that Kyron Williams will not have a touchdown today. I like it. Yeah. I, I, as we say, he's Stewie, he's Stewie anyway. Jew. Oh, yeah. yeah, he might get a receiving touchdown. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I'll run. I reckon he won't get a touchdown. Yeah. I reckon Stafford will throw it to his receivers. Yeah. I and agree. Kyron Williams' streak ends. And I think if I'm the Vikings – Defensive coordinator who does a great job, Brian Flores. Flores yeah. I would be putting on the whiteboard his name, saying he does not get yards today and he does not get a touchdown, and we win this game of football. And the, the Minnesota have been very good. I think they've only given up three points in the first quarter this year alone. So they are playing in front all the time. The Rams have been horrendous against everything. I yeah. just looked before against receivers out aligned out wide, where they've got Addison and Jefferson. So those two are the guys. I think they can both score. But also Jones is. I think they allow the fifth most rushing yards. So if Jones is healthy, which he should, it's a short break. But I reckon he can get to work. And uh, he's yeah. a good coach too, Kevin O'Connell. He is. Yeah, he's been great. They're, and having a great defensive coordinator is uh, is helpful. It's going to be interesting. Uh, the dollar seventy. I don't know what I'm missing sometimes. Yep. I feel like that is uh, like last week Denver. I thought it was an absolute lock. They won by twenty or whatever they won by. Like they were going up against Spencer Rattler and the Saints with no receivers, and you know they just gave up fifty points to the Bucks. I thought yep. so. Prime time again. I, I think the Vikings have just. It's just an easy head to head. Traveling on a short week, um, but I, I agree with you. I think that they'll be stung a little bit by what happened against Detroit, a, a divisional rival, um, yeah. and they'll bounce back. Yeah, I like them too. All right, let's move on. The Eagles. Some great games this week. Last week, we, I thought it was tough. This week, Eagles at the Bengals. Um, this one's in Cincinnati. Obviously, look, I don't think both teams are going well. They both got a win last week. They were lucky. The Eagles last week. They didn't look great. Nah. I didn't think. Oh, the Eagles! No, the Eagles were great. They smacked the Giants. Well, I just oh, like you think that was. Still I, sloppy? I thought it was a bit, bit sloppy. I thought it wasn't a, a really, really polished because I don't like the Giants. I mean, Giants got a good run defense, but I don't yeah. think that they're a great side. Well, you take Saquon out, and they're probably struggling. He went, he went off 170 yeah. yards rushing. I mean, without his explosives, he had three explosive runs. Yeah, they have been struggling though. You're spot on. Like we talked to Sip about it. Is he the old mob? Yeah. Uh, AJ Brown or bust? You know, they only yeah. just got a touchdown late last the the week prior. Um, the guy that I'd like to see is Devontae Smith, but he's got a bad matchup this week again. Um, so I'm he got turning a nasty hit a couple of weeks ago as well. It just sort of yeah. you wonder what the uh, how the half concussion. Correct. Yeah. Who are you tipping in this one? And do you have any ma- like I don't really have anyone. I'll, I mean, it's a very simple game. My my research on this is 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 very helpful, but everyone knows the the Bengals they're very easy because Joe Burrow targets. Higgins and Chase, Chase, 34% each. So it's 70% of target share goes to two players. So if you've got them in fantasy, like yeah. it's as good as it gets. Yep. You're going to get your, your opportunities. It's just a matter of if they can score and if they can explode. And the Eagles are known to give up some big players as well. So I think this could be, you know, they could probably get going. But who do you think wins? 
Uh, I think the Eagles just, but I think it's pretty high scoring. Uh, I think it's going to be you probably hit the over. Um, just depends on what the conditions are. Um, but I think that both teams are going to be able to move the ball. And Cincinnati are not great against the run. So I think that Saquon will be able to get loose again um, and Philly just. Yeah, I agree, mate. I, 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 I don't know. Because it's in Cincy, I think they might win, but. I wouldn't be betting in this one, so I'm just going to no. stay away from my, my head-to-head. Normally, I give you a real, you know, got a full confidence, so I'll stay away. But that one should be – I'm hoping that's a bit of an offensive juggernaut. You know, yeah. you've got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Saquon. Yep. And then you've got with Chase Brown, who's been great, and he's actually taken over that backfield, and you've got Higgins and uh, Jamar Chase. So yeah. it could just be a very simple game on paper. It could be the same game multi-filler. Similar to the, the Cincinnati-Baltimore uh, game where, yeah. you know, like they're both scoring over 30. Yeah, that's what we want. Ravens at the Browns. Uh, looking forward to this game. Yeah. Like you said, Jameis Winston's back. You know, he eating those fi- – I saw a highlight video of Jameis the <laughs> other day. Like, did you see his interview last week yeah. about Deshaun yeah. Watson? And, yeah, and now there's, good. there's yeah. a lot of memes out there. <laughs> so I'll get them up later. But uh, and get around Ghetto Gronk, I think it is, Harrow, our man behind the uh, camera here. But Ghetto Gronk on Instagram. It's an Instagram page. Just check, check it out because they do some funny stuff. All right, Ravens at the Browns. Ravens are airborne. They're $1.22. I, I'm just loving what I'm seeing. And uh, I think Derrick Henry is going to explode again because the Browns are giving up a little bit on the ground. Yeah, there's still a good um, defense. The Jim Swartz coach, defensive coordinator for the Browns. And uh, I, I think that it's it's always hard, these divisional games. Um, you know, they, they know each other really well. They play twice a year. They, they seem to be always a bit of a grind. It, it's not in generally blowouts. Mm. I just wonder, you know, if Jameis starts to let it fly, how many go to his uh, receivers? How many interceptions does he throw? That could be the difference. Is they'll he he will air the ball out, but um, you know he has got that vulnerability. He can he could throw five touchdowns, but he could throw one touchdown, four picks. Um, and if they uh, win the turnover battle, the Ravens is going as well as what they are. You feel like they they will just roll over the top of them. I've got a sneaky one for you. I've done a fair bit of research on this game. Cedric Tillman, do you know much about him? No. So he's been promoted to the starting lineup. Um, he, he's, he's now going to become the one wide receiver. He was, he was taken pretty well, high in the draft a couple of years ago. He is being touted to be a bit of a superstar. And with Cooper out, yep. he's going to take that role. Right. And with Jameis now throwing the ball, I think he's someone that no one would be talking about. I think it's just starting to pop up on, you know, our sleeper app is available and yeah. trending. But he's someone that's going to be trailing, I think, a fair few games. And Baltimore's giving up the third most receiving yards to the position. So I, I, if, you're, if you're aligned out wide and you're a receiver and you're playing the Ravens, you generally go pretty well. So I think Cedric... Tillman is a little bit of a value play for everyone out there this week. But as I said, my best bet of the week is Jameis Winston for 225 passing yards. You get about two bucks. Yep. I think you can tease that puppy right up depending on what apps you're on. We're on sports bet here. But I think you just tease that puppy up and uh, they'll be trailing, I reckon. So, yes. And like you said, Ravens give up all those points in the last quarter. That's just cheap yardage. Yeah. Interesting as well. They've taken the play calling away from um, Stefanski. So he was doing the uh, play calling, the offensive play calling, and now they've given it to the coordinator um, to do it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see well, if that changes. If you go by what the Jets did, that worked. Yeah. They take the play calling off old mate, bang, yep. they got the offense going. So that's good. And your man, Jerry Judy, he, he, he gets a good matchup. They're giving up the third most uh, to those receiving yards. Um, to I, res- I think receivers. David Njoko is a good play too. Um, he's, he's a good player. You know, the tight end is a bit of a safety blanket. I think he'll find the middle of the field. Um, I, I think that uh, he's uh, not a bad play. Well, he led the Browns in target share, 26.9%, and end zone targets last week with three, and he tied Cedric Tillman in first read share, 31.3%. So them two will be going hard. And also, Kate Otten, he posted 100 yards last week, so yep. you're spot on. I think... I honestly think James could throw 300 yards just because I don't think they'll run the ball. I think the, I think your your um, bet of the, the plus 200 is the way to go. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Uh, we'll keep moving down. That's going to be a crack. I'll be tipping the Ravens there. Titans uh, at Detroit Lions. I'm hating the Titans. They're ruining the way football should be played offensively. They just have no quarterback. They can't get anything going. I thought their defense is all right. Mm. But last week, the Bills, they had them kind of not on toast, but they just, they had, I think they were up 10 early and in the end they get blown out. It's just, I don't know why you own a football club 
and you don't have a quarterback. Well, they thought that they did. That was the thing. So M- Mike Vrabel, who I think is one of the best coaches in the NFL. He'll be coaching next year. He'll definitely be coaching next year. He he let, Well, they kicked him out because he said Will Levis is not the guy. And they and the ownership said that it was, so they move Vrabel on. They bring in, uh, I think it's David Canales, um, uh, and uh, and they, I oh know David Canales is, I think he's at um, Carolina, but uh, they bring in a new guy who says, yes, I can work with Will Levis, and for what we're seeing at the moment, uh, Will, Will Levis is not the answer. I had Ridley as one of my better bets last week, um, and he went under actually just, but he had 33 yards at halftime. He had nine targets. And I think he caught two passes because Mason Rudolph just can't throw the ball. And yep. it's, it's so frustrating. You cut Tannehill last year. I get it. You've got to get these young guys some reps. But they're definitely I, – I just can't see a future for either of them. And it's uh, it's frustrating if you're a Titans fan. Yeah, I took the Detroit in our fantasy as my defense this week. Yeah, love it. Goff, 83% completion rate last month. Yeah. Last MVP month. MVP has to be up there for the MVP race. Him and Lamar. I him, think him and Lamar. Lamar. Even Baker. I, you know, Baker might struggle now with uh, Evans and Goodwin being out. We forgot to talk about those two, actually. We'll yeah. talk about them when their game comes up. But they're more – I mean, the injuries are just stacking up. It's getting yeah. ugly. But, yeah, he, Baker's been enormous. Um, all right, I'm going to tip the lines. And I don't know how sexy this one will be. I actually think the defense is all right from the Titans, but mm. what Josh Allen did last week, um, you know, Coleman out wide, it, it's it's going to be interesting. I, th- I saw Jameis Williams. His, my man's been done with uh, for PED. He's been uh, – he's, he's out for two weeks. Two weeks he, for yeah. taking some sort of supplements. Which is uh, not a bad slap on the wrist. Uh, yeah. be, it's two weeks is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, they, they sort of just handle it internally in the NFL. Yep. Interesting, though, will be – I mean, Ben Johnson's a, obviously a, a really, really good play caller, um, the offensive coordinator for the Lions, and they are humming on all facets. I mean, the two-headed monster that they've got uh, in the run game and then a great offensive line allows Goff to play – and be so accurate because he's never under pressure. No. And then they've got uh, St. Brown. Um, so they are just a really well-balanced offensive um, juggernaut at the moment, Detroit. Mon- uh, Monty hurt his ankle last week. So for everyone out there, just monitor that. If you're going to be thinking he's going to score a touchdown, maybe he will. But his ankle or knee or whatever, he got injured early and mm. Jimmy Gibbs exploded. So that that – double head, you know, that two-headed monster. It might not be two-headed for a couple of weeks, you know, as powerful. I reckon you might see a bit more Laporta action now that uh, now that he's a bit banged up. But we'll, we'll have to monitor that. Let's keep moving. The Cardinals, they got the chocolates last week against the Chargers, which is pretty big considering uh, I didn't think they could do that. But the Cardinals are taking on the Dolphins. Now, this is the game I'm talking about. This is the game that I want to see the Dolphins get going. Our man Regan Bayless, he hasn't won a game in fantasy. His team hasn't won a game all year. <laughs> he's having a dog of a year. It's he's got to be. He's as well he's as it is. I think, he's just, I think he's drinking piss on Melbourne Cup Day. He can't even get a ride. <laughs> but the king has to be up and about because I saw a little clip the other day. Tyreek Hill saying shit was beautiful. Yep. Tua's back. I understand Tua's had the concussion, but he's cleared. He's good to go. Uh, they've got the specialists over there. So clearly he's fine. He's going to put his body at risk. He's wearing the hard helmet. He's going all out. So fingers crossed they don't get near him and he stays protected because when he's quarterback, he doesn't miss these balls out open Tyreek Hill plays like they have been yep. with his short pass, puch, play calling, whatever they've been doing. But finally, the Dolphins – they might get going again. Most it's back. A chain. You got Waddle. You got Tyreek Hill. You got Tua. Surely this week they can get the offense going. Wispy. Yeah, you feel like this is their their time and probably the season. They don't win this, their season's done, and yes. it, it effectively is um, close to being so anyway. But if they get Tua back and they get on a bit of a roll, they are the most explosive offense. And you know that one-two combo, I think, is the best in the league when it's up and going. But uh, you know, the Cardinals, um, they were gritty on the weekend. I mean, I've got Connor and Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison, you know, is free all the time and <laughs> Kyler can't see him. That's the, that's the real problem. Small, He's too it? small. He cannot see over the offensive and defensive line. And you see these these clips of Harrison, you know, out free and he just I just can't see him. So is, they're going to have to work on either getting Mars and Harrison into the slot more so that he can get um, quick – uh, passes and and they can throw in the throwing lanes or those, those scramble plays with with Kyler um, and they're just not that efficient um, the the synergy between the two of them. It's well said, but uh, from I mean last week the Chargers 
I mean, Chargers well, is a good defense anyway, well, well, and they played yeah. tough. Yeah, but Herbert threw the ball a lot last yeah. week, which is he hasn't done all year. They give up a lot of yards, and I just think Tyreek Hill, he is my absolute best, maybe best of the year. This is a week where he he needs to explode just for his own confidence, you know. He's just yeah. so talented. He's the number one ranked player last year, according yeah. to, you know, the NFL players. So yeah. uh, he has a, the best matchup. Yep. He gets his quarterback back. He said he had a great week on the track, which I love. What's the weather doing? And you know? I'm just going to get the weather up for you now. Because right it's in now. Miami, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. weather. I mean, the weather right here on my uh, on my app here says 27, a little bit of rain. Okay. So, but if, when it's raining, that's, that's good because okay. it means defenders can't you know, keep their feet. Slide, and he knows right? where he's going. I mean, I watched a clip last week. I got this page I follow on Instagram, and they're going, "This is why Tyreek Hill's not getting the ball." They were literally just sagging their defense to yeah. the short side of the field, knowing. The that old Snoop Huntley wasn't even looking. Yeah. And they'll, and Tyreke was actually running up the field because the pressure was just coming. They were just zoning across and they wait for that little dump ball to the running back. Or the, yeah. and, and it was just... It was, and they haven't been able to run the ball either. So, no. you know, like when they're going really well is when they can run the ball, you got to play the run, and then you can play the, the, the slot receivers get free. Which is what the Steelers are now doing with Russ. Like Russell Wilson created the opposite of what they've done. You yeah. know, they're trying to force the run to open the, pi- the pass play. Yeah. They he, he had the ball going so well to Pickens that they were like, shit, we need to defend that. And then Najee Harris got going. So I think A-chain, yep. yards, most it, he gets the anytime tutty because he gets goal line generally. Uh, but Tyreek Hill, I expect an explosive, I think maybe two explosive plays. And Waddle maybe as well, but I think Tyreek Hill, best bet of the week. I'll be tipping the Dolphins in that one. You get $1.50 as well. So uh, looking forward to that one. It could be, you know, it could be explosive. The Dolphins defense is banged up. Righto, let's go to Foxborough. Gillette Stadium, the Patriots, they're one and six. They're hosting the Jets, two and five. Now, if that if the Jets don't win this game, I will never. I I'll look down the barrel and say I I'll, I will never talk about the Jets for the rest of the year because the Aces community have had enough of me talking about the Jets. But I will give up on the Jets. I won't even mention them when we go through the games. They won't get mentioned, but they need to win this week. Absolutely, they need to win. There, everyone knows they're all in this year. They obviously made the trade last week. I just think that. Uh, they're going to have to find a way to win. They, they're just not in synergy, are they? Like the Garrett Wilson, um, Adams, you give it a couple more weeks. But the, I think the the way in which they've got to play is they've got to feed Brees Hall and then play action off that. Um, Rogers can't move the same way that he used to with Green Bay. You don't see those scramble-type plays outside the pocket that he was so good, but he's still got the accuracy and the arm strength. Mm. But I think it now has to revolve around play action pass. Um, so establish the run early. Uh, the Patriots will be stung after what their comments were. But um, it's going to be again these in these divisional games are always tough. They are, and the Jets need to stop the run. But Hassan Reddick's back, and the pressure on a quarterback. It's a young quarterback. Mm. It's very tough to be a rookie in this league. And if you're going up against – the Jets' defense is very good, you know, yeah. especially, you know, Sauce Gardner and all those guys running around the back. It, it's going to be tough. So I, I think the Jets can smoke them. Okay. Like, properly smoke them. And uh, Devontae Adams, I think he needs to lift. So yeah. uh, he had a lot of targets last week. He didn't have much production, but I think he might get going yep. this week. I think there, there's enough chemistry. It's like riding a bike. I would have thought they were a bit rusty last week. Mm-hmm. This week, come out, a couple of old school plays. They're drawing up something. They've got a week on the track. I'm liking I'm liking the Jets this week. I'll say you are talking week. your book, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, I am. I'm talking my book, and I'm. Uh, you'll see how happy I am next week because I think there's a lot of easy easy ones uh, this week. Falcons at the Bucks. This game, both teams four and three. It was – very exciting until Evans did his hammy and Goblin dislocated yeah. his ankle. It sucks seeing two uh, two guys I love watching. They're so consistent. Yep. Goblin in the slot, Evans touchdown beast, and Baker playing you know MVP football. Yeah, but I just can't go past the Falcons now. No, I, I don't love the Falcons either. I think no. the South is is really soft, especially with Evans and uh, Goodwin out because their offense run revolves around those guys being able to be fed on the outside, which gets their um, their run game going. And, and even though they're not super strong in the run game, they are able to still establish it but because you have to honor the threats on the outside of, of Goodwin and Evans. So I, I think that the, the Falcons win this. They're... Um, they are. Uh, they've got more weapons at the moment, and, and I just think that the the South um, isn't isn't sort of that strong. The only caveat would be Todd Bowles is a very 
good defensive coordinator, and they were really opened up last week against the Ravens. I think that they would be a bit of a an edge um, off the back of that, and and they he would be driving a pretty hard line on his defensive uh, side of the ball. So they might play it a lot tougher, Tampa Bay, and, and it could be a closer than what you think. Tampa are good against the run. I know Derrick Henry exploded, but if you yeah. watch the game, Derrick Henry hadn't done anything. Like he was on 33 yards and then bang, he goes the, you know, he goes the length of the field. Mm. They're traditionally good against the run. So but Bajan Robinson, I've been pumping him up the last month and he's been super. He went 100 rushing yards. But I think I think this is still a pass game. And they're a bit of a pass funnel, the Bucks. Yeah. I, I think they're very easy. They've always been easy to read. They've been good against the run. You can pass it on them. Yep. Uh, I think this will be a, a good game for Bajan. Over, you know, Pitts has been coming to life. Talk about who's Stewie Jew. I've had a bet on Pitts for a touchdown a couple of times this year, and I've got nowhere near it. But he, he has to score soon, and I think this might be the week. So talk about put your money where your mouth is. I reckon Pitsy might be a little cheeky. But $1.65 at Atlanta head-to-head, I like it. I know they're on the road. I think they've got enough on the defensive side of the ball, and I don't know who Baker's going to throw the ball to. There's a couple there. They've got a couple of young players. But um, – yeah, those injuries are uh, – you know what it's like. When yeah. you lose your two leaders, like that yeah. rattles the group. And if they're down a couple of touchdowns early and Baker's struggling to get a play, he's going to get frustrated. And I think Atlanta can just come in there and just get that job done. Uh, let's move on. This one's another cracker. We've got Packers taking on the Jags. I know the Jags have been shit. They're two and five. But Packers five and two. This game's in Jacksonville. I reckon Trevor Lawrence has been really good. His receivers have been dropping passes. It's actually, I don't think it's been him. It's been his defense, and I think it's been his receivers dropping some crucial touchdown uh, passes, especially a couple of weeks ago against Chicago. He was good last week again, slick. They ran the ball. Bigsby's the man now. ETN's out with that injury. But Bigsby, he just pounded the rock last week, and he honestly, I don't think Trevor Lawrence had to throw the ball for the last quarter and a half because they literally just pounded the rock and just kept getting downs and just chewed the clock yep. against the Patriots. So it'll be interesting to see what they do this week. Um, my best bet for this one is is Jalen Reed. He's in the yep. slot, and the slot receivers are giving up just so many yards against the Jags. Last week it was Demario Douglas. He got injured or something sick. So he started the game with two catches, started the game, and then didn't come back on. I think he was injured or sick. I don't know what it was, but it was a unique one for him. But again, slot receivers just chopping up against the Jags. So that's the one I'm going to be targeting. What do you think? Yeah, I think that the the Packers are a, a really good side. Um, you, they can def- they're very hard to uh, catch passes on. They're very good secondary. The Packers. Um, so I don't think that any of the Jags um, wide receivers will get going. Even Ingram is back, which which yeah. helps them because um, Lawrence has a good connection with him. So I think maybe if there's a tight end play, um, if you wanted to go the over with Evan Ingram, I think that that's uh, not a bad um, play on this game. But I, I really like the the Packers overall. I think Jordan Love is is really a good um, quarterback. They've got a great wide receiver room, and I think you'll be able to run the ball on them. So I like Jacobs as well with the overs. I love your, your call on Evan Ingram. Uh, we go to the stats here. The Packers are giving up the eighth most receptions, 5.6, and the seventh most receiving yards to tight ends. And Trey McBride last week, he went for 96 receiving yards in this matchup. So it's it, it, you're on the money there. I think, uh, I think your man Ingram can get to work. I reckon this is a bit of a smoky game for the Jags. Yeah, although oh. they've been over in London for two weeks, yep. so they uh, and they've got a good record over there. So it's been, you know, a, a good hunting uh, ground for them. So they win the two games over there, and then they come back, um, back home, big trip. But Green Bay, it's a long way from Jacksonville. It'll be interesting to see what the weather's like if it's humid down there. Mm. Um, you know, because Green Bay is a very different climate, but. Um, I still think that the the Packers are a better side. So do I. Maybe maybe the Jags cover the line. Yeah, great call. I just think it could be closer than what we think. Yeah, and you know, NFL, every anyone can win on their day, but um, I'm liking that game. I think there could be a lot of scoring. Yeah. And uh, Watson, Jermaine as well. Christian Watson, touchdown beast. He tends to be their target king down there in the red zone. So look for him. Right. Let's move to the Colts taking on the Texans. 
The Colts are four and three. The Texans are five and two. I think the the Texans have been very average the last couple yeah. of weeks. What did CJ Stroud throw? Eighty yards last week. He's really missing Nico Collins, hasn't he? Ever yeah. since he went down, um, he just hasn't been able to grab the same amount of um, chemistry with. Uh, I've got Tank Dell. Um, you know, Diggs was targeted a few times last week, but Nico Collins is the guy that he really likes to go to, and he can stretch the field for them. And they just haven't been um, as smooth. Joe Mixon was really good last week had two touchdowns against the Green Bay Packers and he can run the ball for them. Um, they've got a good defense, the Texans. I think Stroud will find a groove, but he just hasn't been able to build that kind of chemistry with Collins not being there. So uh, I think it'll be close again. I, I don't love the Colts. I don't think that they're a great side. Um, I don't love Anthony Richardson. I'd prefer them to play Flacco so if, they, if they were going to try and win now. But I uh, understand that you've got to try and build for the future uh, I like the Texans, but um, I think it'll be a low-scoring game. Joe Mixon absolutely exploded in this matchup in the season opener. He had 159 rushing yards, and uh, he added 19 to his receiving yards. So it could be him again. But I reckon CJ Stroud bounces back. The Colts, they're allowing the eighth most passing yards. So I don't think – and that's an average of 236.9 for anyone out there. But – he won't. He won't be doing what he did last week. I, I, I think that the Packers have a great They've defense. They've a great secondary, and Packers, uh, yeah. and it's a completely different matchup. I agree with you, I, Richardson. I don't. I don't. No. I don't think he's going to be your guy. I, it's a bit early to call it, but just very much a, a, a running. He's a bit like a Tim Tebow type. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a bit of a a brute. But I want a bit more class and. I feel like it's a it's a Hail Mary uh, touchdown that goes 60 yards to Alec Pierce or it's just an interception. I I, I don't think they can um, – I, I agree with you. I just think they, they win more games with Flacco. Yeah. I, uh, it's annoying. I'm, yes, exactly. I'm talking my own book here, but I'm hoping that with uh, the Texans being able to establish the run with Mixon, they can get the play action and Tank Dale can stretch the field for them and he can get well, open. Well, I, I think He's you're talking your book, I'll be following you, but that's exactly what Nico Collins did at the start of the year. So with him out, uh, you'd expect Tank Dale to be stretching the field or Stefan Diggs, but he's normally in the slot. So it's going to be interesting, mate. I, I really, really like the Texans this week um, whilst uh, Richardson's quarterback. Let's keep moving. We go to the 7.05 a.m. games. How good is it now that they're a bit later? Like Those early games just kill you. Uh, Bill, this is a big game. This is a huge game. Bill's taking on the Seahawks. Seahawks will be at home, but DK Metcalf hurt his knee last week, which pisses me off because I want the Bills to lose, and Bills add Cooper into their lineup, and he just catches touchdowns because Coleman uh, tells him where to run. And Coleman comes alive. you got Josh Allen. you got Cook. Look, Seahawks have given up a lot on the ground. This is my other one of my better bets of the week. But Cook, to go over rushing yards or score a touchdown, whatever you prefer to do, but they're just allowing you to run the ball. The Seahawks are banged up on that D-line. Yep. They're uh, they're very good against their wide receivers, though, so that's something that I'll give it to them. But I'm, I want the Seahawks to win, but with DK Metcalf out and not being able to stop the run against Josh Allen and that, uh, it's going to be a tough – it's going to be very tough. So – I'm uh, I'm thinking the Bills will win this. I want the Seahawks to win, but I'm going to be looking at Cook uh, on the ground there for uh, the Bills and think he can probably get going against the Seahawks. What do you think? Yeah, I think you, your summation is, is spot on. Whoever can establish the run, and, and I'm talking my book too because I've got Kenneth Walker as my <laughs> running back, but he, he's been really good this year oh, and, and he's both in, in the run game and the pass game game too. So I think whoever can establish the run, get a lead early, will be able to then um, control the clock and, and and get the play action game going. Um, I never like going against Josh Allen because he has the ability just to win the game off his own brilliance. Um, but I, I think that the, the Seahawks are, are going well. I, I think that they can hold at home. I just don't know. Um, I don't have a lot of confidence. I wouldn't be um, taking either in, in this game. No. And like I said, James Cook, the Seahawks are allowing the second most rushing yards to yep. the position. So it's a lot, the second most. And they're like the Seahawks, they're no mugs. Like, they're, like four I said, and three, to you, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're four and three and leading their division because San Fran's a bit banged up. So it's it's a big concern, which means, you know, Geno might be throwing it, playing from behind. But um, 
That'll be a good game. That's the first one to kick us off at 7.05 a.m. These these later games, I must say, they've been a bit average lately. I think we had a couple of injuries last week, which just killed our best Well, a bets. couple of the West teams and aren't great. You know, the Raiders and the Broncos uh, well, and those sorts of well, you're talking Rams. About the the yeah. Panthers and Broncos is up next. I don't have much to say for you right here. Bo Nix has been going well. They're running the ball. I thought Williams, uh, he, he had his best game of his yeah. career. First time with a two-touchdown uh, game against the Saints, but that Saints defense – uh, was just letting you do what you wanted, and the Panthers are as well. Bryce Young, he's going to be he's going to be starting. They got rid of the uh, Dalton was in a car accident, was uh, busted his thumb. I didn't know that. Yes. So, I mean, I missed that information. Right. Is that why he's out? Yes. So he's actually wasn't promoted. It was just like no, no, no. It was, it was due to injury. That's a stiff one. You know our man Griffin Logue, we played golf once and he crashed the cart and fucked his thumb. Is that right? Yeah, the club didn't believe us, but that's literally what happened. He's reversing without looking, bang into a tree. Was that when Ross was in charge at the time? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I got the arse. Of course, it was my fault. Um, and, and so this one here, Panthers at Broncos, this is a nightmare if you're, if you're young. Your first game back, you go up against one of the best defences at the moment. Patrick yep. Satan comes back, I think, off the concussion. He's going to be locking up Deontay Johnson. If you've got yep. Johnson, I wouldn't be touching him. Um, Trevor Hubbard's been a good pick. Yeah, he's been um, all right. They've got a young running back that's been drafted off a, a knee injury. I think yep. he might be returning this week or next week. So just, yeah, Trevor Hubbard, maybe a, it, it's a watch. Yep. But, uh, oh, look, the Broncos are going to run the ball. Yeah. Bo Nix should have scored a touchdown for me last week. He didn't. He ran 75 yards and got taken out at the three. And Williams got a cheeky tutty. But they give up a lot on the ground, the Panthers. Yeah. So I expect Broncos to run the ball, and I expect it to be pretty simple from there. Will you take the Broncos um, or would you take the Carolina with the points? I no, think you're I'd getting take, 10 points, I mean, aren't you? dollar twenty three, the head to head, I always wouldn't take either. But yeah. I, 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 if you want I think the, you'd take the dollar twenty three, wouldn't you, you and put it into a it multiple? Up, but these yeah. days I've been getting rolled by these type of games. Yeah. And, 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 and What about head to head dollar twenty three? That seems it's like a pretty, pretty good. It's pretty, I mean, it's almost like. There's no way the Carolina are going to beat nah. Detroit, uh, Denver. Nah, no. You, it's not a bad play to just to put it into yeah, a, a multi. Yep, just multi that one up for sure. Right, this is a game that. Doesn't make sense for what I'm about to say, but the Chiefs are undefeated. I yep. think their last loss was against the Raiders. It was. Yeah. And, Christmas Day, I think yeah, it was and last it was year. A, and it wasn't I don't I can't even remember who was quarterback. I don't think it was anyone special. I think it might have been was it maybe it was Aiden O'Connor, whatever it is. Anyway, it was it was no one special. And they ran the ball. I and, think they scored two de- defensive touchdowns. Yes. There was no offense. Yep. Um I don't think that can happen. No. The way the Raiders are going. But the Chiefs aren't going well. Uh so look, I'll tell you what I'm gonna tip. Travis Kelsey, if you're listening. Can you score a touchdown? You're killing me. You haven't scored a touchdown all year. You've been on our Stewie Jew list for eight weeks. So, Travis, like, it's bizarre that he hasn't scored a touchdown. Mahomes only thrown six, so, yeah. you know, I let him off the hook. But I think Travis Kelsey this week against your Raiders has to score a touchdown and get off our Stewie Jew list. Does he score this week? Uh, I think so. I think he does too. And then Kareem Hunt as well. I think uh, he, Hunt, yep. yeah, he's a one you go for. Oh, I reckon that the, the Chiefs have a bit of a message to send after – in the off season, Antonio ah, Pierce said good. that we had the Chiefs number and that we have no problem playing the Chiefs and that we've got a way to play Mahomes. So I think that there would have been used as motivation for the Chiefs this week and I'd expect them to come out and maybe remind everyone who the big brother is in the division. Did we not have a clip of someone taking the piss out of Mahomes' voice and they were pretending to be frogs pre-season, I'm positive the Raiders were taking the piss out of him. I think that there is something in that There is too. something online. We're going to clip it up. This is, you know what? Everything Mahomes has done this year, he's been throwing interceptions. He's hardly throwing touchdowns. He might come out and he might throw five tutties this yeah. week. I'm going to call it three tutties, 300. He's just going to tell everyone who's the king around that division. And uh, I'm positive it was personal. And he said... They, they'll have to wait for that one. So I would not be surprised if he explodes. I think you're right. I remember, I remember it being a uh, talking point in the offseason. And this is important. You need yeah. to remember these little things, you know. Sometimes it's someone's birthday and they score a tutty and you go, oh, I should have known that. So this is actually great information. They took the piss out of Patrick Mahomes in the preseason and the players were impersonating him as a frog. So I, I think he's going to come out and uh, – and and really get to work. He might, yeah, he might explode, and he needs to because he's only thrown six TDs for the year, and we're up to week eight. Yeah, and he's in the MVP discussion. He's thrown eight interceptions, which is quite unique for Patrick. But this week, he's going to explode. All right, there's a few more games. We'll fly through. We've got three more: the Bears at the Commanders. Isn't this amazing? The pick one versus pick two. I don't know if Jaden Daniels is going to play. We don't know that yet no, as we record off his this rib injury, But the four and two Bears, the five and one, are they? Five and two. Five and two Commanders. Um, 
just goes to show if you can uh, get it right. We saw with CJ Stroud last year, you put the right person in the right um, environment, what it can mean. And uh, I think it would be great to be to see these two young quarterbacks go head-to-head. It might not happen, but Caleb Williams is getting better. Uh, Mariota came in and started um, last week against obviously a weak um, Carolina defense. But Washington's uh, offensive juggernaut, uh, heads up to Cliff Kingsbury, who's come back as the offensive coordinator there. Dan Quinn, who's come in as the head coach, looks like a totally different organisation. How good is there? We love Dan Quinn. So they look uh, they look genuine, um, and Jaden Daniels just throws such a beautiful uh, oh. deep ball. I just think that uh, I'm going to take the Bears this week if Daniels isn't there. If sure. Daniels plays, I'd take the Commanders, but um, that would be a one to watch. I think that – the Bears are going well. Uh, Williams is getting better. He's got uh, building this chemistry. They're starting to run. Their defense is getting better. And I just think if Jaden Daniels can't be there to use his legs, it makes it a little bit harder. And I reckon that the Bears would be the play if he doesn't play. Mate, you've absolutely nailed that. It's going to come down to if Daniels is quarterback because I think they. I think if he. I think if he does start, I think they can win. Yep. Um, Agreed. Because of what he can do with his legs, but and I, I know Mariota can do the same thing, but. I just don't think he's the class and he hasn't got the nippiness that uh, Mario Daniels doesn't has. throw the ball as well as what Daniels no, does. No, and I think they know that. Uh, and he obviously had an easy matchup last week. I I really like the Bears. The Bears' defense is really good and their offense is starting to get going. But I do kind of try, oh, they played the Jags. They played yeah. a couple of soft. This is going to be good. And what I picked up last week, again, they played the Panthers. So it's a hard, tough read. But they were, I thought – I thought the Panthers could still get something going in the past game, and mm. they couldn't get anything going. I wonder if Dan Quinn's starting to, you know, get their defense going because their their defense was giving up the most passing yards all yep. year. So if that's the trend that's continuing, then Caleb, you know, Williams, I think he can pass the ball, so you can take him over on his on his passing yards. Yep. Um, and they're not really allowing too much on the ground, Washington. So I don't like I don't like Swift in this week's matchup, but yeah. I hope this is explosive. Mm. And uh, what a rivalry this might become. This would be a great. Because it's going to be an argument for the next 10 years. Who who should have went one? Yeah. And this is where you start. And then both teams are probably saying we're pretty happy with the guy that we got, aren't they? I think they are. Yeah. Who, who would have you preferred? On what I see so far, Jaden Daniels I'd t- I would take over Williams. But um, I think that uh, there's not going to be a lot of difference by the time that they're finished. Is this a weird take? But Caleb Williams' facial hair pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't you reckon he just shave his face? No. <laughs> I just think and he, I don't think about it like you I don't know do. Why. It's like real, like, it's like real puby. Like I just, I just, I like him clean cut. I hundred percent agree. Do you agree? Yeah. Right? I don't know what it is, but it just annoys the shit out of me. It looking annoys at him. me. Like, I, I love like, painting his fingers and that. I love it. Go for it. I think he looks. I just think he could look cleaner. Mm. And he is a clean operator. And he and he just, I don't know. It, it's a, it's a weird take, but. I don't care what people look like. I just feel like he's a real slick, classy quarterback, but he's got bum fluff on his face. And I think he just needs to get the old Gillette Fusion out or whatever the clippers and just clean that shit up. Um, Wispy's going, what are you talking about? What are, what are you talking uh, about? All right, I'm going to tip I'm gonna tip the Bears if Daniels is, Daniels is not playing. Um, I wonder what, yeah, the bookies have got the Bears $1.65, so they must be anticipating that. Mm. But uh, your best bet in that one is a player prop fantasy. Do you know? Do, is there any player that you like? Uh, I, I mean, I think that he's starting to build a, a really good chemistry with um, DJ Moore. So I, I'd go DJ Moore for a touchdown. I like it. I like it a lot. I I feel like Roma Dunze is just due. The commanders are giving up the 13th um fewest receiving yards to the position, but I feel like he might just get a deep ball because of all this DJ Moore and Keenan Allen's back now. There's a lot to stop. So I yep. think sometimes that third string can just get out the back. Yeah. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see. All right, let's keep moving. There's only two games to go. This is There's one average game coming up, but this game is big. This is a rivalry game. This is where it's at. This is in San Fran, uh, but Cowboys <sighs> taking on the 49ers. Now, this game is always uh, amazing to watch. This yep. is primetime football. Sunday night, uh, this will be 11.20 uh, East Australian Eastern Standard Time. But the 49ers are banged up. Yeah. And Brock Purdy, I don't know who he's throwing the ball to, but I kind of feel like this could be an offensive game. The, the, the Dallas are giving up so many touchdowns and yards. But I trust probably the Cowboys' offense 
for some reason, I think their defense can lift a little bit. Oh, I don't know. I, I feel like the Cowboys can get this done on the road. No, I'm, I'm against you on this. I'll take the 49ers. Really? I know that they're banged up and um, they're just sort of hobbling around at the moment, but I just don't like the Cowboys at all. I think that the Cowboys can't defend anyone. They're slow on defense um, and – I know that they're coming off a bye and they, and they were embarrassed by the Detroit a couple of weeks ago, but I just don't like um, the Cowboys and how they're going. I'd rather take the 49ers at home. Ayuk out. Yep. Debo will be out. Jennings, I think, yeah. might be out. I think Jennings is coming back. He'll be coming back off an injury. Yep. No McCaffrey. Mason's there. They are running the ball well. I'll yep. give him that. Mason. Kittle's questionable, but he'll play. Yep. Cowboys have had a week off to prep. Surely we can get a cl- – you think San Fran easy? I'll take San – no, no, not easy, but I'll take San Fran. I'd rather, if I was having a bet, I'd rather have my money on San Fran than Dallas on the road. Dallas are 275, so you're obviously on the money here. I didn't. I thought it would be closer than that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm willing to have a little go at Dallas here. Okay. I just feel like it could be a CD – CD Lamb game and uh, and they can't uh, run the ball, Dallas. Oh, they're not running it, but they need to get some points early. Their problem has been they're trailing, and then the team goes, "Well, you're just going to throw it." So yeah. we're just going to we're just going to sit back, sit back here, and Dak, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to give you much, and then he's just it's just crumbling. Yeah. But he's played some tough teams. Oh, I like this game. Hey, either way, you stay away from head to head. Let's just hope this ball's up and down, yep. up and down, and. Uh, there's a couple of players that could, you know, that, like the guy that got shot early in the Ricky year. Ricky Pearson. Ricky Pearson. He, he's, a, he's a early pick. Yeah, first, he's ra- first rounder. First yeah. round wide receiver, yeah. so we might see a bit of him. Yep. Um, Tolbert's been pretty good for the, the Cowboys. We might see a bit of him. Ferguson's been a bit average. I think he can get going, so it's going to be good. All right, let's finish off with the uh, the Giants. Oh, geez. I'd love the Giants to take out the Steelers, but they won't. Steelers are hosting the Giants. Steelers are five and two. They're pissing me off. They continually win. I say That's it every year. That's because you're a Baltimore fan. That's why. <laughs> yeah, but you. also I just don't rate. Well, you know what? I actually liked Russ Wilson last week. He yeah. got the he got the offense going. But yeah. normally they play this boring game and they win. And it, and to, it's all because of Tomlin. He's just yeah. such a good coach. Well, it wasn't the the line afterwards. So there was a reporter who asked him after the game. Oh, you know, was so it funny. was it um, was it a difficult decision to you know bench Justin and bring on. Um, uh, Russell. Russell, and he said, well, that's why I get remunerated as well as yes. what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's why I get well compensated. <laughs> and like, it's, it's just He just takes any any uh, flame out of it. It brilliant answer. He, he would be one guy. If I could play for someone, I would love to play for uh, Tomlin. Yeah, he, he's seen some units as well. Like, yeah, he's got a lot big of Big personalities. You think about like Antonio Brown, how he was able to actually manage Antonio Brown and then, yeah. you know, like what he was dealing with behind the scenes. Mm. But just the culture of the Steelers, the way in which they play, they play you tough all the time. You're going to have to be able to block TJ Watt. Um, and I just don't think that the Giants' offensive line is very good. Giants can defend the run really well. I think that their D line is good, but they just cannot, uh, I, they can't pass block. And, and I think that um, he's going to have a big night. I reckon, I'm not sure what the sack total for TJ Watt is on the night, but I would be going the over. Oh. Last week, every time I watched Red Zone, it was just cutting back to Daniel Jones third down, yeah. getting sacked. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. I, th- I don't know how many times he got sacked last week. It was it was crazy. So, yeah, it could be uh, if you can find a market for TJ to get three, he might get three this week. It was just ridiculous. Uh, well, man, I'm actually excited to see the Steelers throw the ball and get to work. Yeah. Just before we wrap up, that's the last game of the round. Do you think the Steelers will make a play? For some receivers, there's a few rumors out. In well, they market. went for a, they were in the market for Ayuk in the off season. Yeah, they um, they missed got, him. They missed him. Be interesting to see if a uh, Cooper Cup. Um, I think that there's a market there. I think the Rams would be willing to let go, and they it's talk that the Rams are willing to pay some of his salary too. Wow. Um, so that hurts if you're a Rams fan. Yeah, yeah. but that you know you've sort of got to look at where we're at as well. You know, if if the Rams lose today and they go to two and six. You know, they probably go, okay, well, the season's over. We need to start rebuilding. Let's see if we've got some assets that we can capitalize on. So I think they're, they're, he's a watch. Um, I, I reckon that the Steelers would be in the market for someone else that they can have other than Pickens so they're not so one-dimensional. Yeah, I like it. There's rumors Deontay Johnson will be getting traded, but he just got traded to the Panthers. I just mm-hmm. find that real strange. Week eight already being put on the trade table. You'd want to be getting out of the Panthers, though, if you're a player, wouldn't you? You would be. And I think if I go back to my, uh, you know, you go back to, <laughs> to, 
to, a couple of years ago when Thielen got picked up, he said, I think this team can win a Super Bowl. I, I just think that'll go down as one of the worst takes in history because <laughs> they cannot win a Super Bowl at any time soon. All right, Wispy, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll move into our best bets, but uh, you, you, that you've, I'm looking forward to Cowboys v 49ers now. Me and you might have something on that. That'll be good. That'll be good viewing. But thank you so much for jumping on. Thank you to everyone that uh, tunes in. And Sip, if you're out there listening, mate, we hope you're enjoying your pina colada while you're out there on holidays. He was a bit worried. He goes, oh, make sure Wiffy doesn't do too good, too good of a job. He might steal <laughs> no my worry. spot. So, safe. Uh, you're always welcome back here. We'll get the third seat. But, um, yeah, thank you to everyone that tunes in. And we apologize. It's a bit later than normal. Uh, hopefully the Vikings and Justin Jefferson and Addison are just exploding um, as you're listening to this. But, uh, yeah, looking forward. Look, you know what? This is probably the most exciting week we've had for a while. There's a lot of good games, yep. a lot of good matchups, and a lot of easy ones on paper. So let's hope that uh, we can keep going and – and uh, our fantasy team goes eight no wispy. Oh, Can you believe we're seven and oh? Sick. No, I, I wrote anything to say. You know, the king told me we had the worst team after the draft, Is and told right? me Derek no, Henry no, no, was no, a no, disgrace. No. It wasn't the worst team. I said they'll finish just outside the top four, and you're making it like I said. Oh, you, you got said the worst Derek team. Derek Henry on paper. was a disgrace, and Saquon Barkley will get injured. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought Saquon would get injured, but <laughs> and I thought Derek Henry was due for an off year. But obviously, <laughs> I was pretty wrong. You flogger. That's all right. I think uh, I think Jerry Jones thought the same. He didn't the the <laughs> entire league is waiting for the uh, Tommy's <laughs> team to fall over. Don't worry. I've been a bit quiet because I don't want to sound no, like I'm too quiet. No, you <laughs> like peacocking around he is at the moment. <laughs> well, uh, everyone's happy that Regan's on the bottom. Yeah, it is. It is Regan. He was telling me to get out of the league, so I'll, re- <laughs> I'll get that clip up. That's why we love the live stream. I'll clip a couple of them things up. But thank you to everyone. Hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, hope you're back a winner at Cox Plate as well and uh, NFL Week 8. Can you believe it already? So uh, looking forward to uh, getting into it. See you next week. Thank you.